In this video, we're going to look at a legal problem called binary tree post-order traversal. So given that the root of the binary tree return the post-order traversal of its nodes value. So this question uh, for post-order traversal, basically we want to traverse the left subtree first. So if we given a binary tree, so like this, right, we want to traverse the left subtree first, then the right subtree, and then the current node, right? So the order goes like this, so left, right and then the current node okay and in this video i'm going to show you both recursive approach as well as iterative approach and for iterative approach there's also a couple of ways we can solve it um, i'm going to show you the easy iterative approach and then i'm going to show you kind of like a medium level uh, iterative approach as well as a little bit difficult level of iterative approach um, and then basically for the recursive solution in this for this problem. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to print the left subtree first and then the right subtree first, then the current node, right? So the goal is we want to traverse this binary search search, uh, sorry, binary tree, and we add the uh, the node's value onto a list of integers and return that at the end, right? So you can see we have an example of this, right? This is our binary tree. So we're traversing the left subtree, in this case, the left subtree is null. Then we traverse in the right subtree. So now we have node two, node two also, we do the same thing. We traverse the left subtree first. So we have node three and we're traversing the right subtree in this case, null. So in this case, we have, we just visit the current node, which is two, right? So in this case, we have three, two, and then we're, we're going back to the parent stack, right? The parent uh, or the root node. And then in this case, we're just basically add the current node's value, which is node one onto the list, right? And at the end, we're basically returning that returning that list. And you can see that if we have empty list or empty or just tree is null, we basically have null, right? So to do this using a recursive approach, uh, what's gonna happen is we're just going to do this recursively, right? We're doing a DFS, we pass in the root, and then what we're gonna do is that we check to see if the current root is null. If it's null, we just return, we've done our searching, right? We've done our traversal. Um, if in this case, if not, then we, what we're going to do is we're going to traverse the left side, right? And then traverse the right side. Then at the end, we're basically, once we traverse the left subtree and then we traverse the right subtree, we're just going to um, take the current root, right? So if I give you an example, uh, if I have like a tree like this, right? So we first traverse the left subtree and left sub, this node has it also has a left subtree. So we traverse the left subtree first. We know that this is, this is a leaf node, so we add a leaf node onto the list. Then we come back to this node, and this node has a right subtree, so we traverse the right subtree. And then uh, we know that this is a leaf node, so we add this node onto the list. Then we come back to the root of the subtree, so it's this node, so we add this node onto the list. Then we come back to the parent. Parent also has a right subtree that we haven't traversed, so we traverse the right subtree, which is this node right here. We add this node onto the list. Then we come back to the root. In this case, this root, uh, this node hasn't added onto the list, so we add the current node onto the list, right? So we basically traverse the left subtree, the right subtree, and then the current node, right? And then it's pretty simple if we do it in a recursive approach. Um, and the time and complexity, right, for solving this problem is basically going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes that we're that we have in our binary tree, right? And for space complexity, in this case, it's going to be big O of h. Um, H is basically the height of the tree, right? We basically uh, doing a DFS, and then once we, uh, you know, reach to the end of the the, the tree, right? The end or to a leaf node, we basically um, coming back to the parent stack, and then do uh, and then and then uh, traverse down the the right stop tree, right? So in this case, the the space complexity in this case is just going to be big O of H. Now let's take a look at how we can be able to. Um, solve this problem using iterative approach. And by the way, the code is in the description. So let's continue watching. Um, what we can do is we can use the, um, we can do the same thing that we did in pre-word traversal, right? So pre-word traversal, we visit the current node, we traverse the left subtree and then the, cur the, the right subtree. So what we can do is that we can basically um, do the same algorithm and then we're just going to append the node, right? The current node um, last, or sorry, the first, right? So that we can always get the orders that's the opposite of the pre-order traversal, right? So for pre-order traversal of this tree is basically two, 
Um, the left subtree is just one, the right subtree in this case is three, and then the four, or sorry, four and three, right? Because we're going for the current node, the left subtree, and the right subtree. But in this case, the post order traversal in this case is going to be different because we're visiting the, the left subtree first. So we have one, and then we have three, we have four, we have two, right? So you can see this is basically the left subtree, and this is the left subtree of this node, the right subtree is null, and then the current node, right? And then we have two is the current node as well. Um, so in this case, we're, you can see the order is always pretty much like the opposite, right? So in this case, um, you can see, right, we have two, we have four, three, which is the right subtree, we have one, which is the left subtree. So it's left, the right subtree, and then the current node. Current node, left subtree, right subtree, right? So what we can do is that we can basically just add it differently. Like, so we can basically have a list and we can always add it first. So in this case, when we enter this loop, we have no two. So we add the root onto the stack and then we just pop that stack off. We'll just pop that note off the stack. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add it on the first, right? So in this case, we have no two um, here. Right, or just just no or just two, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna traverse the left side first. So because we're using a stack, so that the, the last element, um, in this case, the last element in is the first element out. So we're basically adding the left node first, right? So in this case, node one, and then we're adding the right node first. So notice that we're basically traversing the, the right side first. So in this case, you can see it's the, in this case here, you can see is the left, the right, and then the current node, right? Because you can see we're always appending first. So in this case, we pop the top element out of it. So sorry, this should be this should be four, right? Okay, so we pop four out of it, right? So we know the four has a left subtree and a right subtree. So we add that onto that as well. So in this case, we add four onto the, the list, right? Because here and then four has a left subtree, so we have um, at three under the stack, right? And then in this case, well, what's gonna happen is that four does not have a right node, so we continue. So then we pop the top element off the stack, so it's three. So three has is a leaf node, so we add three onto this list. And then what's gonna happen is that three is a leaf node, so we don't add anything onto uh, the, the stack, right? So then what's gonna happen is we're going to uh, tick out the last element out of the stack, so which is no one. So in this case, we add one, right, first. So this is our list, right, which is identical to this. So notice that we're basically going uh, to basically um, go for the left sublist, right, or subtree. And then this is basically the right subtree, and this is the current node, right? So you can see that we're basically just going to put or we're actually just going to visit the left subtree last and the right subtree first. And then in this case, we're always append that, right? We're doing the pre-order traversal algorithm, but we're just going to append first, right? So that we have the current node um, at the very, very last, and then the left subtree at, um, at the very, very beginning of the list, and then the right subtree after the left subtree, right? So what are some other ways we can be able to solve this problem using iterative approach? Like, how can we be able to traverse the tree um, by insert the each and every single node last instead of insert first, right? Because previously we we're basically insert each and every single node first um, onto the list, right? So how can we be able to insert last into the, onto the list? So what we can do instead is we can basically uh, traverse the tree um, and the problem about post order traversal is that we don't really know if the if we already traverse the current nodes children at all, right? Because for pre order traversal, we're going from the top to bottom, right? We're working our way down, so we know that we already visit the current or the the, the parent node already because we're going from top to bottom, right? But the thing is that we're going, but post order traversal, we're going from bottom to the top, so we don't really know if we already visit the current nodes children at all, right? So if I'm at no two. Um, Right, I came from here and I go down, visit the left subtree, the right subtree, but then I come back to the root, which is no two. How do I know if I already visit no four or no five, right? How do I know that? So what we can do instead is we can actually be able to delete the connection, right, in the binary tree. So in this case, we can delete this connection. 
so that we ensure this node is basically a leaf node. If it's a leaf node, we just add it onto the list, right? So let's just go through this. So basically what's going to happen is we add the root onto the stack, now we take it out. We know that this is not a leaf node. So what's going to happen is we're going to add the children, right? We have node three notes that we're adding node, the right node first, and then node two, and then we take the top element out of the stack. And then we know that node two, right? Um, because in this case, we, we know that, uh, oh, sorry, we're saying peak. So in this case, we have node one, node three, and node two, right? So we peak, right? So in this case, we know the node two um, has, is not a leaf node, so we're adding its children. So we have node five, and we also have node four, right? And node four is a leaf node, so we take that out, right? Because this is a leaf node, so we take it out, we add it onto the list, and then we just pop it out, right? And then what's gonna happen is that we basically just take the top element or pick the, the top element on the stack. So it's no five. No five is a leaf node. So what's gonna happen is we're just going to remove that, right? So in this case, we just add it onto our list. And then you can see that one when we add the uh the, the left and the right node, we're actually deleting the connection. So in this case, we add a node four and no five, we're deleting that connection. When we add node two and node three, we're deleting that connection, right? So what's going to happen is that we're basically take the top element out because node two is now a leaf node. So in this case, we pop that out and then we add it onto the list. And then the next thing that we have here is node three. Node three, we basically uh, is not a leaf node. So we add its children. In this case, we have node six added onto the stack, right? And we make sure we remove that connection. And then what's going to happen is that we know no six is a leaf node, so we just delete that out of it, right? So in this case, we have no six out of it. And you can see uh, we're just going to um, basically uh, left with no three, right? So in this case, we have no three. No three is a leaf node, so we add no three onto the list. And then we also left with no one, right? So in this case, we get this as our answer, right? So this is also how we're going to do it. But the thing is, like, what if we don't really want to modify the, the tree, right? What if I don't want really want to delete that connection? Well, what can we do? So this approach is kind of very similar to the in-order traversal problem that I did. So if you haven't took a look at the in-order traversal problem that I did, please take a look. It's very similar. We're using a variable to keep track of the nest, or in this case, a temporary node um, that we're about to traverse, right? So in this case, you can see we're starting and we basically didn't really add any node onto the stack. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to have the current node is equal to the root, which is node one, right? And the previous is basically null for now. So what we're going to do is that we're going to say current does not equal to null. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the current node onto the stack. So we have node one, right, onto the stack. And then current is equal to current dot left. So now current, right, is basically node two. And then what's going to happen is we're just going to um, continue, right? So then we check to see if current node is does not equal is does not equal to null. In this case, it doesn't. So we just keep adding the the left node, right? So the goal is here. You can see we're basically just adding the all the left node until we get to current is equal to null, right? So we add node two, we add node four, until we get the current node is actually equal to null. So then what's going to happen is we're going to take the, we're going to peak the top element on our stack. In this case, it's node four. We know that node four dot right is equal to null, right? So what's going to happen is we're just going to add this leaf node onto the list. And then notice that we're, what we're trying to do here is we're basically pop this node out of the stack. And then uh, we're just going to get pre is equal to top, right? Which is basically, so pre, is basically now equal to node four. And then we have current, which is equal to null. And the reason why we get current is equal to null here is because we want to not traverse the left side again, right? In this case, you can see we take the node four out and then current is equal to null. So it will continue to go down this path, the else statement right here, right? So it will not go down. So notice that the if statement above this condition, right? Like if current does not equal to null, this condition where just keep trying going down, right? Keep trying going to the left side 
until we hit null, then we're just going to try to traverse the right side, right? And this is what we're trying to do here is we're trying to traverse the right side. And in this case, you can see current is null. So we take the top element out of, or peak the top element, in this case, no two. No two dot right is, in this case, uh, is not null, right? So what's going to happen is we still have to traverse the right subtree. So then what's going to happen is we're going to get current is now equal to what? Equal to no five, right? And in this case, um, pre is still no four because that's the last element that we inserted onto the list. Okay, so then in this case, what's going to happen is we're just going to add no five. Uh, sorry, in this case, we know that no five, current is, does not equal to null, so we add no five onto the stack. And then current is equal to current dot left, which is pretty much null now, right? Because no five is a leaf node, so we have null. Um, and then what's going to happen is we're just going to uh, go down here, right? Because now the current node is null. So we peak the top element, in this case, no five, no five uh, dot right is null. So in this case, we're going to take that note out of the stack and then we're just going to add that onto the list. And then we're just going to get current is equal to null. Um, and then pre is equal to the last element or the no five now, right? Okay, so then what's going to happen is that we set current is equal to null. So we continue to go down this path again, right? So now we're, uh, we're continue the loop and then because current is equal to null, so we go down here. So we peak the top element, which is node two. So we know that node two dot right is not null, okay? But the thing is that we already keep track of the previous element, right, which is node five. We know that top dot right is equal to prev, which is node five, which is the node that we already visited, right? So what's going to happen is we can basically just add node five, right? Or sorry, just take this note out because we know that we already successfully traversed its children. So we have note two here. And then in this case, we basically have note two as the previous node or yeah, the previous note. And then the current is equal to null, right? Because in this case, uh, we're con we want to continue, right? Going uh, to the top, right? Trying to go back to the parent node, in this case, no one, right? So the, the last element is no one. No one in this case, uh, we peak in this case, no one, right? So no one uh, in this case, dot right is not null and dot right is, does not equal to no two. So what's going to happen is we're going to get current is equal to uh, in this case, the no three, right? So in this case, no three is basically the right child of no one. So we're just going to go traversing down the right subtree, right? So I won't try to uh, finish this um, walk through now, pretty much you get it, right? So we're basically trying to use a previous pointer, keep track of the right, uh, the last node that we inserted on the, the last node's value inserted, uh, no, sorry, the last node that we that we take it out of the stack so that we can compare to see if that node is actually the right node of the current node's subtree, right? If, it's, if it is, we know that we traverse all the children of the current node, otherwise we going to um, basically traverse the right subtree, right? So you can see that this is basically all the three ways that we can be able to solve, or in this case, all four ways, because including the recursive approach. So these are all four ways we can be able to solve the post-order traversal. And you can see the space and time complexity are pretty much dissimilar. Like they are all have a time complexity big O of N and space complexity of big O of H, right? So there you have it, and thank you for watching.